Hi guys, it's Nova Scotia Living. I'm Tracy, and this is going to be my first kind of um, baking video. Um, I usually make my own bread for my family, and I thought today I'm going to try to bounce back and get back into YouTube because I just started it and um, I had a yeah a stop for a couple of weeks. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do this. So first um, first of all, I don't have a great camera. I have a little handheld. Um, Vado, and I'm going to try to keep this short because I don't really know how to edit or anything like that. But what you have to do first um, is get out your ingredients. They're, it's so simple to make bread. Um, it can be kind of intimidating at first, but it, it really shouldn't be. So, of course, you need a bowl. You need some measuring cups, measuring spoons. Um, I'm using all-purpose flour. You need some yeast. I use this kind, the Quick Rise Instant Yeast. I get it at the local Atlantic Superstore. It's about $7.99. I get the big, the big thing. And what I do is I empty it into a little container and I keep it in my freezer. You should keep it in your freezer just so it will last longer. Um, you need some sugar, you need some oil, you need some salt. And that's it. You don't need any eggs, you don't need any milk. You don't need anything like that. It's so simple. So, um, first of all, oh, and what you, what else you need is four cups of really warm water. What I do, I just run my faucet and let it get as hot as it possibly can. I don't measure the temperature. I live in rural Nova Scotia and um, have well water. I just let, I have a uh, four cup measuring thing. I filled it up for four cups. Let me just do that now. Sorry guys, it's just taking a little while. Um, I got the washing machine going, so it, it takes down the pressure. Okay, here we go. So. Four cups of really warm water. I've made bread so much I don't even need to look at my recipe anymore. I actually got this recipe offline, um, off of YouTube, a YouTube channel, uh, Mi'kmaq Mama. And I wanted to find a recipe that would make more than one loaf of bread at a time. Okay, sorry folks, my camera shut off for some reason and I had to um, remove some stuff off. But, so, I... I was still doing some steps, not realizing my camera wasn't working. So I think the last that you saw, I put five, uh, four tablespoons of yeast in four cups of warm water. The next thing I did was a half a cup of white sugar. And it seems like a lot of sugar, but we are making four loaves of bread. After that, I put five tablespoons of olive oil. You can use olive oil, you can use vegetable oil, whatever kind of oil you get you have just use what you got uh, now what we're gonna do I always like to add a couple uh, cups of flour and uh, then I'll put a tablespoon of salt in one two and it takes one tablespoon of salt there's a little oil left in this oh well I gotta get a wooden spoon. I forgot. Now, yeah, not the greatest of camera people. Let me try to get. I have you guys up on a little tripod, so I don't know. Here's hoping. So I put two cups of white flour in, and I stir it all up. This recipe can take up to 8 to 10 cups of flour. It depends on the weather, it depends on all the elements. Right now, today, it's bitter cold outside. This is cup number three. Cup number four. Bitter cold outside, I think like minus 12. We've got a wood stove pumping here in the kitchen, so it's nice and toasty. And there's 
there's a there's a lot of elements when it comes to bread. Um, oftentimes, I, I just go with how it feels. Um, and right now, it's super sticky. I wait till it gets a little less sticky, and, till I, and then I'll put my hands in it and start kneading it. My table's totally clean. This is seven. This is eight. Let me just make sure you guys are still working. Yeah, you are. I'll put eight in and stir, try to stir as much together. And then I'll start, uh, I'm going to dump it out onto my table, which is totally clean. My hands are really clean. I took, I'm not a jewelry person at all, but I do wear a thumb ring, but I always take my ring off. Uh, and then we're going to knead it. Now, again, some people knead it a really long time. Some people not so much. It, it all depends on how the dough feels. So we have eight cups of flour. And this dough already. And if you see, I don't know if you can see. Let me look. Ugh. It's not all, like, it's not ball-like, I guess. So bits of it are sticky. And I'm going to have some stuck to my hands after I'm done kneading it. But that's okay. That's the fun part, I guess. So like I said, my table is really clean. I like to use a lot. Some people just use a dusting. I don't. I use a big, almost a cup. And I spread it around. And get as much out of it as you can. Now you can do this in a stand mixer. I got a stand mixer for. Back. He's gone to the store. Get going, Mish. I'm making bread. Get going. What is that? Uh, anyways, yes, you can make it in a stand mixer. I got a stand mixer for Christmas, and I've done this in the stand mixer, and that certainly needs it really well. But again, I always have to take it out of that bowl and do this on the table a little bit so I can feel it with my hands. It really makes a difference to me. I can't just uh, do it in there and set it to rise. i got to feel it with my hands. I find bread has a lot of energy, and you just want to feel it and make sure it's the right texture. So we're going to knead it a bit. Once it gets, if it starts to get too sticky, um, we, uh, we can add a little flour if we need it, but you can see that there's a lot of flour on the table, so we don't really need to do that right now. And you can feel the, the dough is kind of warm. It's like it's alive. I can, you can see on my hands, it's starting to stick, but that's all right. I started making bread for my family. I've got to make sure you guys are still working. I'm always scared it's not going to work. Yep. I started making bread for my family about a year ago, and it was just, I, I really love YouTube. I, I call myself a YouTube junkie because I, I really love YouTube, and I've learned so much off of YouTube. And uh, I just wanted to start feeding my family more real food. We, of course, we always ate real food, but um, trying to get stuff from scratch, making everything from scratch as much as possible. So I picked up baking a lot of our home goods. I picked up canning and preserving. Now my mom used to can and preserve, but it was mainly pickles and beans and stuff, and that was in the fall and summer. And I realized that you can can all year round. And I've learned so much from people on Facebook, canning groups, and different YouTube channels. And I just thought, I'd love to try that myself. It's nothing fancy, it's just what I do for my family what we do together. I have my girls come up and help me make this sometimes. They often try to fight with whoever's going to punch down the dough. Because that is always a fun part. Feels good. Let's see. I'm going to add a little bit more because it's sticking a lot to the table. Just a little. I know this makes a big mess, but it's worth it. This is the hardest part, just making the dough. The rest of it, you just need to let it rise. 
I'm going to show you. But this is the hardest part, just getting it together. So. No, here in Nova Scotia today, it's super cold. It's really cold. Yesterday, we had, I had my brother's family here, and uh, anyways, they left yesterday, but here we have lots of beaches, and they went on a, a beach run, and they, they went to the beach and got some shells and nice rocks and stuff, and they come back with a nice piece of driftwood, if you guys know what that is, it's a piece of wood that's been floating in the ocean, and it's kind of smoothed over, shaped kind of strange, but it's beautiful in its own right, for sure. So they were going to try to bring it back to uh, Alberta, which is quite, quite a ways away. Anyways, they couldn't fit it in their luggage, so. I don't know if you can see in this video. I don't think you can. I'll show you after. Oh, yeah, you can. We have a wood fire here in our kitchen. And this piece of driftwood, the one that they wanted to take home. So I have it sitting in front of the fire to kind of draw dry out because it was a bit waterlogged. And it'll be a nice, nice decoration for our house. Who knows? I might send it out to them someday as a surprise. But it certainly has some personality, and uh, I'm sure it could tell some stories of where it's been in this world. It's floated all over the oceans. I like to think that it's seen a lot of places that people never would have seen. Anyways, this dough is coming together pretty good. It's going to be a little sticky, but not too bad. And like I say, in a stand mixer, in a KitchenAid or whatever, this dough will come together real quick. But I find it's, it's extra sticky sometimes because it, it does it so fast. Even if you put it on the low gear, I like to do it by hand or to do part of it in the stand mixer and the rest by hand because it's coming together and you need it for five to ten minutes again all depends on the day the weather good so the way that I try to see again I gotta check I'm getting paranoid you can poke down the dough and if you see it come back fairly good I'd say it's ready it's ready to sit and rise the first time anyways it's amazing how my children have actually come in I usually have all the chairs around my kitchen table be laying on the floor instead of sitting up because my baby boy loves to sit on the table and if we're friends on Facebook You'll see lots of pictures of him there. Mr. Mains, it is. So I'd say th this is about nine and a half cups of flour. Again, seems like a lot, but we're having four loaves of bread. All right, I'm going to put this into a ball. And if you have that spray, cooking spray, You can uh, spray your bowl. I have some, but I'm too lazy to go dig it out of the cupboard. So I'm just going to put a bit of olive oil around in my bowl. Turn it like a doorknob. And usually what I do put it in the oven with uh, the oven's not turned on but I turn the light bulb on in the oven and shut that and you leave it for an hour and it will puff up it'll be like a giant muffin top no joke but since we have the wood stove going I don't need to do that I'm just going to cover it with a towel and put it on my counter because this wood stove is making my kitchen nice comfy cozy so I'm going to clean up this mess set the alarm for an hour and then I'll be back and I'll show, show you what we do after that. All right, catch you later. Hi guys, I'm back. It's been one hour and the dough's risen. 
Um, it is like a giant muffin top. So I'm going to take the towel off. And what we're going to do is dump it out of the bowl. I reserved a little bit of flour in a measuring cup. And I'm going to put that on the tabletop so I can put the, flour, uh, the dough out of the bowl on the tabletop. And I'm going to divide it into four. So let's, let's get started. I need to go get my, uh, I don't know what they're called, but... I use it for all sorts of things, but one of those dough cutters. So let's take the towel off. If you remember what it looked like just a few minutes ago in the video, anyways, it really is like a giant muffin top. It's humongous. Anyways, I usually get my girls, one of the girls, to come and punch it down. But since I'm making a video, and it's my first official baking kind of video, I just wanted to do it myself. So I'm thinking in the future, if I get good at this, I might redo this video. But uh, my hands are nice and clean. I wash them thoroughly. My ring is still off. So now we're going to take it out. And look at that. It looks nice and stringy. I love the looks of that. It looks so nice. It's kind of sticky, but it just means there's air pockets in there. And Oh, it smells so good. It really does. It's what you imagine fresh bread smells like. Perfect. So it's like a big uh, soft blob, really. And again, my uh, my hands are very clean. I put a bit of dough on it, just because it is sticky. And I do have a, a food scale. I just want to double check that you guys are in the frame. Sorry for the jiggling. Yeah, I do have a food scale. I'm not that uh, I'm not that picky, to be honest. I just kind of guess. I have seven kids in this house right now, and uh, when there's bread made, they don't care what it looks like. It's bread. There's sandwiches. There's French toast. There's a uh, pizza toast. I just I I make a good guess. Sometimes I have to adjust it a bit, but. When I first started making that, I did the whole scale thing. And it, it, it does turn out beautifully. But it just makes more work. And myself, I'm not that picky, like I said. So there. And usually there's always at least one loaf that's bigger than the others. And I always think of that song off of Sesame Street. Uh, I forget how it goes, but one of these things are not like the other. But that's okay. It's all good. In the neighborhood. So there. So I just move them. I work with one dough at a time. We'll do this one first. Now there's air dough, air holes, air bubbles, whatever you want to call it in there. Ugh, I gotta keep checking. Sorry guys, this is my first real YouTube video tutorial. <clears throat> yeah, you can still see it. I use a rolling pin. And you can hear the snap, crackle, and pop like Rice Krispies. I don't know if it's picking it up on the camera, but I can hear it. And I don't flatten it out like a pizza, but just give it a good roll. That's what I do. This used to be my mother's rolling pin. She gave it to me years ago. And I love it. It's nice and heavy. If I ever had to bonk somebody on the head, I'm telling you, it would knock them out, that's for sure. And so anyways, I roll it up kind of like a sushi roll. Or a, well, I don't smoke, but I guess it could be like a cigarette paper. And then I poke the end in, kind of like it's a belly button. And then I squeeze it. So roll it, poke it, squeeze it. Now this is going to be one of the smaller loaves, but that's okay. I'm telling you, we have to rise this again. I have four bread pans, and I already sprayed them with some cooking spray. And I roll them up, and I smash them in there. Again, everybody does this a little bit different. Some people just ro roll it up. Some people just break it up, like cut it up and put it in. I pound it down a little bit. Not too hard, but just so it fills out the bottom. And that's one. How easy is that? So there's still lots of flour on here. And you'll see. You will see that these rolls, uh, these loaves, aren't going to be all the same. 
but they're all going to be equally as beautiful. They always are. <clears throat> and yeah, it takes a bit of time to do this, but I'm a busy mom. I think if you're a busy stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad, this is quite easy to do. You could do it, you got an hour in between rolling it, and it's not just, you know, you don't have to be right on the head, I guess, you know what I mean? If you're a few minutes late doing this, that's not a big deal. Uh, for me, and I don't want to sound like a homebody, but for me, with so many kids, there's another pan, I always have stuff to do in this house. Laundry is my biggest pain, pain to deal with. I swear, I always joke there's a big laundry monster in my laundry room. And uh, sometimes the laundry monster wins, sometimes I win. But it's a never-ending, never, never-ending never battle. Eventually, we'll probably be best friends, but whatever. So let's do this again. The dough is nice and soft. It's a little bit sticky, but you see it's not sticking to my hand. It's not sticking to my hand at all. And it, I know you've seen when I roll it out, it's not like a perfect rectangle or square or anything. I just do it a bit just to get the air bubbles out. And give it a roll. And I pinch it. You can see it's like a, I don't know how you, I, I describe it, I just squish it up. Poke it like a belly button. Squeeze it. Poke it. Squeeze it. Again, I sprayed these. It's just the no name bought at the superstore. Vegetable cooking spray. Put it in, mash it down. Now you can see from the first pan to this pan. Well, maybe you can't see. This one's a little bit smaller, but it's all good. It's all good. I have one more to do. Yeah, you're still filming. Rock on. We'll do this last one and then what we have to do uh, I'll spray the top of them with some more cooking spray just a, just a little bit now this one looks I'll spray the top of it with the cooking spray and again on a day I didn't have my wood stove going I put it in the oven with the oven light on it just gives off just enough little little tiny bit of heat to help it rise a bit but it's hotter than the hinges in here today. If you can see, I try not to be too much in the video. I'm a little shy right now still. So like I say, only my first time. Uh, I'm just in a little tank top and I'm telling you, it's like the Bermuda Triangle in here, I think. Now let me get the cooking spray. I'll try to adjust the camera. I don't know how long this video is going to be, and I apologize. I apologize if it's too long. But bear with me. I'm going to get better at it. I am. I'll move those a bit closer. And I can leave them right there on the table. So I've just been using that. Just do a quick, just so the dough doesn't dry out. And what I do, I'm just actually going to leave them right there. And I will cover them. And we set the timer for 30 minutes. So it seems like a lot of work, but it really isn't. In 30 minutes, if you're a stay-at-home mom, or dad, or if you're not, if you're a worker and you have 30 minutes, some days you don't feel like doing anything, and that's okay. That's reality. But if you're on a mission and try to get stuff done, you can get a lot done in 30 minutes. And that's what I try to do. So I'll set the timer on the stove for 30 minutes, and then we'll be back. Check you later. Okay, guys, I'm back, and uh, the dough has been in the pan for 30 minutes, and I'm going to take the tablecloth off. And you'll see the difference. 
So you can see that they're puffy and they're up above the rim, whereas before when I punched them down, um, they were down at least halfway down the pan. So I'm going to bring them over to the stove and then I'll move you guys. Again, I'm just an amateur when it comes to videoing things. It's my first tutorial. But, oh boy, the smell. It's so fantastic. It smells like fresh bread already. Now this tablecloth, you'll see me wrap it up, the bread up after. And you'll know what I'm talking about. But, um, oh, let me see. Oh, ignore my kitchen. There, you can see. Anyways, it's the four, the four loaves. So I'm going to put them in. Four at a time. The oven is not on right now. See that? I'm gonna try to hook you guys so you can see. Ooh. All right. My oven is in a state, but you can see them in there like this. So what we're gonna do? We just had lunch, so my stovetop's a little bit messy. I'm going to set it for 375. Oops. And you can start this right from a cold stove. You don't have to preheat it or anything. And I'm going to set the timer. I first do 12 minutes. So when that 12 minutes is up, I take out the pans, and I'll show you this. I take out the pans and I rotate them. So the back ones come forward and the forward ones go backwards. And then I put it in for another 11 minutes. But I'll show you when it's done. We'll be back in a minute. Okay. Check you later. Bye. Okay hey guys, it's show time. The buzzer just went off for the 12 minutes. I know that's not a great angle, but bear with me. You've seen what it looked like when I put the four in there. So this is the ones from the front. I'm going to put them out on the lid just like they are in the oven so you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, I don't have oven mitts, or I do, but they're in the wash. They're just the cheap ones from the DS. So these were the ones in the front. I'm putting them in the back of the oven. These were the ones in the back, and I'm putting them in the front of the oven. So now, uh, let me see if I can zoom in. This is all an experiment for me, to be honest. Now if my stinking tripod will stay there. There, it says end. But now, still th at 375, I'm going to put it on for 11 minutes. And what I'm going to do, you'll see what I have set up. Sorry for being so quick. It makes you dizzy. I put a block of butter in the microwave for a minute so it melts it. I have a tablecloth that I originally covered the bread pans with to rise for the second time. I love the tablecloth, but I never used it as a tablecloth, so it's now my bread cloth. And you'll see when I bring the bread out and I'm going to glaze the bread with some butter or margarine, whatever you have. And then you wrap it up and leave it for a few hours to cool down. Um, but this tablecloth, it's absolutely beautiful. I love it. And I use it every probably four days, so I get more use out of it for my bread than I would ever for a tablecloth, so I'm happy with that. Anyways, when this 11 minutes are up, I will bring you back and you'll see what's going on. All right. Okay, the buzzer went off, so I'm about to take the bread pans out of the oven. Oh, yeah, it's nice and hot. Uh, yeah, I know, I still got my dish cloths, but hey, whatever works. So what I do, I take them right out of the oven like this. Can you see that? Yeah. And I flip it out right away. 
put my bread pan there, and I'm going to go put it over on the table. And I'll bring you over there in just a minute to show you. So there's one. And you can, oh boy, the smell. It smells so good. And I don't know how good this camera is, but it is just the right color. I don't even need to tap it. I know. I the bottom of that. Can you tell? It's cooked. It's baked. Perfect. And I got four loaves of bread, just like that. All done. Wonderful. Last one. Nice and hot. Just perfect. Shut that off. I'll put this over to the table. Right. Now I'm going to spin you around, try to get a good angle, maybe bring you a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. Now that, in the bowl there, I actually am using margarine today because that's what I got. And I got that red brush, I don't know, a few years ago, and I, I need to get more actually because I use it all the time. Goodness sakes. I'm trying to get this working. I apologize, folks, because I'm missing a part to this tripod. It's a beautiful tripod, but it's just missing a piece. It's going to get there. But what we do, we glaze the top and the sides. And uh, again, when I redo this video someday, Hopefully, when I um, have a little more experience, um, I kind of kicked the kids out of the kitchen for today just to try this. But they, this is a perfect part for the kids to help out. I know the bread's hot, but you explain to them that it, it you got to be careful. Let me see if I can do this. Jeez, you can see my stinking laundry room, and it's just cluttered up. Potato bag, cookbooks. I swept them off the floor today, so they're there drying because the wood fire's going. Let's see. I'm going to stop there. Good to go, I guess. As good as it's going to get. <clears throat> so I'm going to reach over. And I just popped it in the microwave for a, a, a minute. I don't generally use the whole thing, but... And what you do, you just... You just paint it. I tell the kids, it's just like painting, painting a picture. You get it all wet, like you're trying to turn a white page into a red page or a purple page or whatever. Get it all wet. And the bread is, I, I know the camera's not picking this up. Probably not. But the steam is just rising off of this bread. And I'm telling you, the smell is just wonderful. It's just wonderful gonna make sure. Of course I'm doing that thing again. And this video is probably gonna be super long. I apologize but bear with me folks. I'm gonna get better at this. I really am. And yeah this will drizzle down onto the tablecloth on the table. And that's okay because I only ever ever use this tablecloth just for this purpose. That's it. I make bread all the time. So and I wash this in hot water in my washing machine, and I make my own uh, washing soda, and I'll show you someday. But I, I use hot water, and it still comes smelling like bread, no matter how many times I wash it. I've made bread so many times, it smells like bread. I try to get the back. I used to try to get every single crevice, the bottom and everything, but I'm telling you, when I squish this all onto one drying rack, or cooling rack, it, uh, the moisture stays in there. The bread is just beautiful. Just beautiful. I try to get it all. Get over there. The color is perfect. It's not too dark. It's not too light. The bread, I mean, I know people tap it. it sounds hollow. But I know
know it's nice and moist in there. And when we cut it open, I swear, it looks just like store-bought bread. I'm not knocking any other homemade bread, because sometimes you, you get bread, homemade bread, and it has the big holes in it, and that's perfectly okay. It's delicious. But I think, I, don't, I really don't know why mine doesn't turn out that way. And I don't mind, because it, it turns out perfect, I think. My kids love it. It's great for sandwiches and lunches. For school and all that stuff, I slice up a, a loaf of bread and I've got sandwiches. It's wonderful. But it'll look just like the bread in the store. So you can't knock it. Well, you can. But really, don't knock it till you try it. There, that's good enough for me. I just like to I cover it all. And no, it doesn't, it, it soaks into the bread. So you don't even, it's not going to be slathered in bread or greasy or anything like that. I wrap it up and I always joke with the kids, like we're wrapping up a present. Or we're wrapping up a baby, swaddling a baby. More, more of that. Because I'll wrap it up. And I, I'm just doing what I learned on YouTube. I don't know if that's standard practice, but what I've seen, that's what people do. They cover it, but I wrap it right up. And I, like this. See the pretty flowers? They're purple and blue and white. I'm not a big flower person, but I love this tablecloth. I'm telling you. And I grab a towel. And for some reason, I just have the need to cover that up like that. And honestly, sometimes I'll leave that all afternoon, and we'll slice it up for, we'll slice it up for supper to go with stew or whatever we're having, corn chowder, doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, so that's it, and I'll bring you back when I actually slice the loaf. All right. Okay, guys, it's only cooled maybe an hour, no, well, 45 minutes or so, but the kids have been hounding me to slice a loaf of bread, so. I'm going to do it now so I can film it and uh, do a little tiny taste test and try to get this video up because, it, like I say, it's my first kind of tutorial. And so that's what I'm going to do. I took one out. The rest are still wrapped up in the tablecloth. And I'll put this one back in the tablecloth after I cut it up because uh, oh, it's still pretty warm. It's really soft in the middle. But we just can't wait. I'm usually fighting the kids off. But, now look at that. Can you see that? I wonder how close I can get with it showing up. Looks just like store-bought bread on the inside. So, I'll cut a slice. Because I got Mr. Mays here, and he really likes bread. He's my two-year-old. I'm going to put that, oh, just a minute, Maze. Do you want some butter on it? Let me put it back in the tablecloth. Oh, slice. Oh, yeah. Can you get me a butter knife out of the drawer? Yeah. I'll try to zoom out so we can, we can get a little taste test. Some bread, baby. Put a little butter on it. It's super soft right now because it's still warm. It will stiffen up a little bit when it cools down all the way. But yeah, it stays nice and toasty in that tablecloth. good maze? Well, like I said, he's two. He is talkative, but he knows we're filming him, so he might not say anything. But, like I say, I have a lot of kids in this house, and uh, they like some bread. So, anyways, thanks for watching. 
and please give me a chance so you can like share and subscribe if you want to and I'm hoping to do some cookies and some meals and I mean our, just our everyday life but right now today I was just wanted to do some bread because we needed it all right everyone have a beautiful day can okay bye-bye can I have some bread? <laughs> cheese Take a bite, Mish. Tell me what you think. I like it. You like it? All right. Say see you later.